Hi friends, let's start a reading vlog. This is going to be a climathon reading vlog. The idea for this video. So my friend Taslin and I are co-hosting the Climathon. Climathon is a year-long reading readathon, <laughs> reading readathon, where we read books about the climate crisis, about the environment, about nature, about plants, about ecology, etc, etc, etc. I will put a video down below where I go more in depth into what the Climathon is. And then here is the bingo board for all the different prompts that you can choose to read from. And I am going to be reading two books this this reading vlog, one which was on my original Climathon TBR and one which is not on my original Climathon TBR, but it does fit into this bingo board. So I'm going to be reading in this reading vlog as well. And I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts about these books, different quotes or ideas or whatever that I find from these books that I find important. But then also I want to share with you guys a couple things that I do that are like more sustainable and kind of the way that I live my life in trying to reduce my footprint, which, you know, <laughs> everyone has a different capacity for what they're able to do, what they're able to access, etc. But I think a lot about this concept of like how we live in a bubble, both in the terms of like the people that we surround ourselves with is a bubble, but also how we live our own lives. So kind of the way that you were raised potentially, or the way that you structure yourself within your own home, to you that is normal. And we don't really push that a lot of the time. And until we see the way that somebody else does something, and we're like, oh yeah, that makes so much sense. Like, you know, that can reduce this blah, 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 blah. And that can like kind of change the way that we do things as well. So anyways, I'm gonna talk about the books that I'm reading and then also about a couple of the things that I do that I try to, like I said, reduce my footprint, live a little bit more sustainably, um, also more financially sustainable, I guess. I feel like a lot of times those things go hand in hand. Uh, which is great, obviously. And then also if you want to share any of the books that you are reading for the Climathon or books in general that have to do with nature or the environment, let me know down below. And also the things that you like to do that you think are more niche that help with, you know, protecting the environment or like not destroying the environment as much as we potentially could be. Because I think that it's very much a ripple effect. Like me making changes does not have much of an impact, but if someone sees the way that I live my life and they make a little bit of a change and then someone else sees that and et cetera, et cetera, or if I see how someone is living and then I make a little bit of a change, you know, I feel like that helps a little bit more. Anyways, I'm trying to have hope here, okay? Let me tell you about the two books that I will be reading in this reading vlog. So the first one is Consume, The Need for Collective Change, Colonialism, Climate Change, and Consumerism by Asha Barber. Asha Barber is someone who I've been following on Instagram for many years. I feel like at this point she does a lot of fashion related content or like fast fashion related content and why fast fashion is bad for the world. This I think is mostly about fashion. Yeah, Uncomfortable History of the Textile Industry one which brokered slavery, racism, and today's wealth inequality. And I'm very excited to read this book. I do know quite a bit about fast fashion because it's something I've been interested in for quite a while, but I've heard amazing things about this. I think Asia Barber is like super smart and like when I see what she does on Instagram, I'm really hoping that this translates and goes like more in depth into what she talks about. So very excited for this. Probably also devastated because, you know, it's not a fun topic. The other one, <laughs> the other book, this was not on my original TBR, but I found this book a couple months ago and knew I had to have it. So here we are. And that is Rooted, How Regenerative Farming Can Change the World by Sarah Langford. If you've been around here for a while, you know that I love all things to do with farming, with plants, with gardening, etc., etc. And yeah, I really want to read this book. Let me read you the back. Uh, intimate and moving memoir charts the quiet revolution taking place in our fields, barns, and hedgerows led by a new generation of farmers on a path of powerful change. I think this book is going to be very emotional for me because it's something that hits quite close to home or to sort of like the dreams that I have for myself, let's put it that way. So these are the two books that I'm going to be reading. I will be back sharing quotes and ideas from these books as well as, you know, giving you guys some b-roll of like nature and stuff because it's... The spring is coming, summer is coming, and it's gorgeous outside, and things are blooming, and I'm trying to spend as much time outside as possible. And I think spending time outside also gives me more kind of gusto to fight for saving that nature. So anyways, here's some good b-roll of beautiful things around me.
camera angle I've never worked with before. <laughs> oh god, there's like dust everywhere. I need to vacuum, but I've been waiting to do some repotting here. Anyways, as part of my climate on vlog and doing some climate conscious actions, I wanted to repot a couple of things here and then also talk about the two books that I'm reading for this video, one of which I have finished. I have finished reading Consumed by Aja Barber, incredible book. Lots of good things to say about this one and then i have started reading rooted i'm 120 pages into this one about regenerative regenerative ag and i'm really enjoying it i have maybe cried twice in this book already because this is something that's like very near and dear to my little heart but um yes i wanted to talk about these two books while repotting a couple of different things i am someone who believes dearly in the power of knowing how to grow things, growing food, growing herbs, all these different things. For me, there's no science to back this. Maybe there is science to back this, but just in my own heart, I really believe that like being able to grow your own food and be sustaining for yourself, but also for your community, if you have that access to, you know, enough space and all that kind of stuff. That is like the biggest FU to capitalism, <laughs> essentially, in my opinion, because food is something that we need, uh, let's say on average three times a day and having the power and the ability to grow that food yourself, I think is, it's empowering, first of all, I think it's like, I don't know, I've been thinking a lot of, actually, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna have a long discussion probably about this and ramble, so I will talk about that once I tell you guys what I'm repotting today. It's nothing too crazy, actually. I, so I currently live in a studio apartment and I don't even have a balcony, which is pretty um, awful for me, but it is what it is. It just, it, it is what it is, but I have essentially two windowsills where I can like store a lot of plants and I definitely do store a lot of plants. And then I also have um, my aunt and uncle, they have a little piece of land. And so like at the beginning of this year, I was growing some seedlings and stuff like that. I had, I think like 20 or 30 tomato and cucumber seedlings in my apartment at one point, which was, yeah, it was a lot, but I loved it. I had a really good time growing all of them, but they're all in the earth now. But what I have to repot here, just a couple of little things. So first up, I have some chamomile. I grew this chamomile from seed and it's starting to grow, go a little like yellow because um, the roots are coming out at the bottom. I think it was also overwatered a little bit. Uh, yeah, not the best scenario. I actually, I was gone for a week and some of my plants did not have a good time. I should have asked someone to water my plants, but I didn't and here we are. But I'm gonna repel this chamomile and hope that it'll be a little bit better. I use chamomile mostly for tea. So I want to have like my own source if I'm able to. Then I'm actually gonna be planting some holy basil seeds. These were really hard to find. My dad had to find these on the internet and he ordered them for me, shout out to my dad. And there's a hundred seeds in here apparently. And I'm gonna plant some of these. Holy basil is also known as Tulsi and it's one of my favorite kind of medicinal herbs. I also use it as tea and I love it so much. I used to actually, this was actually the first plant ever that I seed saved from way back in the day, but I no longer have those seeds. They stopped sprouting, etc. So I have a new batch here. I'm gonna plant some of these and hopefully they will grow nicely. Then we actually have a lemon verbena plant, which I also use for tea. This isn't just, just like a tea vlog, okay guys? I bought like a full-sized plant of this at the market a couple of months ago and it was doing really well. I was like, you know, drinking it, adding it to my tea and all that kind of stuff. And I was gonna dry some of it and was gonna have a great time. And then I one day cut off a bunch for my tea and then I put it the rest of it in water because I didn't need as much as I had that day in my tea. There is something on here as well. Okay, I'm gonna have to go through this and like pick off some, there's like some sort of bugs. Okay, because what happened was the bigger one that I had, like the actual plant that I had, uh, when I went away, it did not have a good time. Like a lot of it really died essentially. Like it, it dried up and I was like, okay, that's okay. I'll like, you know, continue watering it, whatever. And then I looked at it and it was just like infested with something. And so I decided to compost it because I was like, this is not, I don't want to have like an infested plant in my apartment, but this looks like it also has something on it. So, okay, I'm just noticing that now. Anyways, I had put this in water <laughs> a while ago and it had sprouted roots and I'm glad it did because now I can like hopefully have another lemon verbena plant from this, but I'm going to repot this and then I'm going to go through it and just try to make sure there's no like actual like infestation on it and keep it separate. So there's that. And lastly, I have a little cactus leaf here i don't know if you can tell this little guy and i actually took this from my parents i went to go visit them and i broke off it's like one of those like bunny ear cactuses and then i brought it over here and now i'm going to put it in some soil so that is five minutes of me telling you what i'm going to be repotting here so yeah i just have some there's like a, a container here that holds like 
containers and stuff for my aunt and uncle and other things that I just reuse. I try to just like reuse as much as I can. Um, yeah, and then once in a while, like here, you can see there's a couple like pots that I have purchased that were new. These were on clearance because it's like end of season or whatever, and they were really, really cheap. So I have some like pots like this for next year for seedlings and that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, generally it's just like reusing old containers and all that we have here, like a yogurt container that holds a cactus. You know, just, I think sustainability is less about what you buy and what you kind of just continue to reuse. And don't feel guilty if you have some plastic in your life. Just, is there something else you can do with it? If yes, do it. If not, then don't. Okay, you know what? I made a decision. I'm actually not going to repot this right now because I want to fully investigate what's going on with that. <laughs> so I'm just going to do repotting of the chamomile, plant some holy basil, and then get a little container for this little cactus here. Okay, let's talk about consumed. First off, let me just pick out... Okay, okay, okay. Guys, sorry, I'm so disorganized. This is like a disaster. Let's put this guy here. Let's put this here. I'm going to have to get a better container for this but that's okay i'm gonna put the chamomile in here and then the holy basil maybe i'll put in like a small guy let's put him in a smaller guy for now until it sprouts and i go oh, it's already messy that's okay then i have this for that this will be the holy basil that's what i said right and then the little guy if i had like a little container yeah what about this little container we'll just put that into this little container and then find a stand for it later okay also I have a tiny bit of soil left here. Speaking of which, uh, I'm gonna do another little section here where I talk about like things in the kitchen that I don't buy, but I have never in my adult life bought a garbage bag because I just essentially reuse any sort of bag that comes into my life. So for example, this, there's like a little bit of soil left in here. I'm gonna be reusing this as a garbage bag. And then when it fills up or when I just kind of feel like it, I'm gonna throw it out and then move on to the next thing. So if I eat like, I don't know, a bag of frozen vegetables, let's say, I will use that as a garbage bag for a couple of days and then just carry on. And I know that that doesn't necessarily work for everybody. If you have like a bigger family or you produce more garbage or whatever it is, you might need to like actually buy garbage bags, but I just don't feel the need to do that for the most part. I like, yeah, like I said, I've never bought a garbage bag and I just reuse the random bags that stuff comes in and it's worked out so far for me. Maybe it's not the most aesthetic thing, but it's okay and it saves me some money and it saves a bit of plastic so yeah that's all we got anyway so here's my new garbage bag <laughs> i'll start using and then actually i have another thing of soil that i purchased look at all this plastic this is crazy i purchased this uh half price it worked out for like 50 cents or something because i guess the bag was probably open so they like saran wrapped the heck out of it and then discounted it so let me open that and then i'll get to talking Oh yeah, this was like stabbed. It has like a huge hole in it, but okay. Okay, Fast Fashion and this book, Consumed. I really like this book. So this book goes into kind of like the basics of what fast fashion is. Also a lot about like colonialism and how fast fashion has sort of become the thing that it has because of different forms of oppression and racism and capitalism and all of these different things. But what I really liked about this book the biggest okay so i am as a bit of a backstory i'm someone who does not engage in fast fashion really at all i would say on like a rare occasion i will maybe buy something that's like uh new first of all i almost buy nothing new like most of my clothes are secondhand and it's been like that for many of you many many a year <laughs> uh for a plethora of reasons but yeah either things are like hand-me-downs or secondhand and that's just kind of how i live my life so i wasn't necessarily looking at this book for me to like change my habits because there is a part at the end that is sort of questioning people like why do you buy fast fashion how can you change do you have the privilege to be able to change your your buying choices essentially and so that part i don't feel like applied too much to me of course we can all do better i'm not saying that but sort of like breaking out of fast fashion is something i did quite a few years ago but what i really liked about this book is the fact that it actually went into depth in like a very accessible and cohesive way. I have purchased quite a few books over the years from people who I have discovered online who are kind of like not necessarily online activists in the sense that they only do online activism but who do a lot of online activism and online education through their Instagram posts and I've had a couple experiences where when I buy the book like I'm buying the book because I want to go further in depth into the topic right and if I buy the book and it just feels like I'm still on Instagram and I'm not really getting 
that much extra information out of it. I don't love that because like I'm here. Oh, look at that root system. Oh my God. Sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. Please be happier. Also, it smells so good already. That's, oh, I'm so excited. Should I split it apart a little? No, I, they've, had, they've had a tough life. Okay. So if I'm, if I'm buying a book, it's because I want it to go more in depth into the topic, but I still want it to remain kind of accessible and like easy for me to read and easy for me to understand and for the topics to be put together in a way that you can kind of get right, without having to go and have like a master's degree in whatever the topic is. But I feel like this book did exactly that. It is laid out in a really, really good way. So the way that the book flows is really good. The topics that are covered in it, I think are very important. It's done also in a way which I appreciate in the sense of she's not judging anybody for the choices that they are making or the choices that they have made. And she also recognizes where she has kind of come from and you know the the choices that she was making when she was younger with the information that she had versus the choices that she is making today with the information that she has and also the, like talks about the different privileges that she has or the different privileges that other people may have and there is a bit of this like well you know if you have the privilege and the knowledge to make different choices like what are you going to do with that right <laughs> and some parts of it really heartbreaking um like and some parts also, also like just boggle my mind she once again mentioned that statistic of i think it was done in the uk a study where on average women wear an article of clothing seven times before it gets passed on to a friend to a thrift store or whatever that's wild to me seven times like <laughs> I don't know. I, I really, I cannot fathom wearing something just seven times before passing it along. It's, it's a pretty big problem. And something that I think is so important too is like buying things that you actually love. Because I think if you buy something that you actually really, really love, you're going to want to take care of that piece of clothing. Whether it's from fast fashion or whether it's from like some ethical, sustainable brand or whatever. Ay caramba. If you buy something that you genuinely really, really, really enjoy, then you are more likely to take care of that item. If it breaks, you're more likely to, you know, sew a button back on or fix something or whatever it may be, right? Like I have pieces that are from fast fashion companies that I bought secondhand or that I've had for 10 years, let's say, and I fix them like because I really like that, that piece of clothing, right? And so it doesn't matter if it's from fast fashion or if it's from a more sustainable brand. If you really, really like something, you're going to want to continue having it in your life. And I think that's the biggest takeaway is that number one where are you sourcing your things from when you do actually need to buy something but then also once you have something like take care of it really really take care of it and recognize all of the labor that went into into producing something because it's a lot and this question comes up in this book of like how do i convince people to care about others <laughs> and i don't know i really don't know how to convince people to care about others but recognizing that a lot of effort and kind of modern day slavery went into a lot of our clothing, I think is super important. I would highly recommend consume. Uh, if you're someone who buys fast fashion, I would recommend it. If you're someone that no longer buys fast fashion, but wants to learn how to have better conversations, maybe with others about fast fashion and the textile industry as a whole, I think it is super valuable. All right, little basils. Let's see how you do. That was probably way too much. They're gonna, they're gonna do their best. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I quite enjoyed it and I would definitely recommend it. I would also recommend following Aja on Instagram. I think she has a fantastic Instagram account and always posts like really valuable things on there that we can learn from in like a very nuanced and accessible way. And I, I really enjoy her content. And then Rooted, I have just started reading Rooted. It is really, really good. <laughs> she is going into becoming a farmer, kind of accidentally, a little bit by choice. Her and her family have decided to live off grid. This is something that her grandparents used to do and then they sold the farm, etc., etc. And she's kind of now, at least at this point, telling the story of herself and her family and then also the choices that her family like her generations and ancestors before had to make in regards to farming and some of the neighbors that she has met and their stories as well and it's really coming from the farmer's perspective which i think is important because 
as someone who you know lives in a city and i include myself in this i can look at farming and be like this the way that you're doing this is not sustainable you know we need to be doing it this way or that way like look at, look at the climate yada 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 but like i'm not in that situation right i as much as i would love to one day but currently i am not a farmer i don't know what it takes to be a farmer it's not something i've ever relied on for my livelihood and so who do i think i am to be like, I know better than you, <laughs> you, sir, who have been doing this your entire life. And maybe it isn't in the most sustainable way, but like, how can we bridge that gap, right? Which I'm really enjoying. So yeah, consumed, highly recommend. Sorry, I've been talking for way too long. And then also rooted, I'm really enjoying it. And I foresee myself crying a couple more times because as I said, this is something that's like in my soul. But um, yeah, two very good books and they've definitely gotten me out of my reading slump. I have, okay, finished planting. My chamomile is here, it's chilling. Holy basil, we'll see how it goes. And this little guy, I hope, can come because then it's like a little piece of my parents' house, but in my house. And yeah, that's it. Okay, on to the next, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Hello, I am back. My hair is a little bit wet, but it just is what it is. Let's talk about the two books that I read. Let me first fix my squeaky chair and get comfortable here because I have a couple things to say. I'm just going to talk about the two books. It's been a while since I read them. Honestly, I've been filming this vlog for way too long. Just life. Life is just life. But yes, I have had some time to think about both of these books. So I'm going to talk about these two books and the impact they've had on me, the on what I think about them. These two books, we got rooted and consumed. Let's first talk about consume. Consume, the need for collective change, colonialism, climate change, and consumerism. I have been thinking a lot about this book because I had said before that this is a book that I wasn't necessarily trying to curb my own fast fashion addiction because I don't really have a fast fashion addiction or in terms of like consuming of clothes addiction overall in general, I don't really have that in me anymore. I used to when I was younger, I definitely had this addiction to shopping, specifically to clothes shopping and makeup shopping and just overconsumption in general, but I don't have that anymore. and. I wanted to read this book because I wanted to understand a little bit more about the intersectionality of what happens in the background of fashion and kind of how we as consumers are targeted, but then also the people that are making our clothes and the, the chains and everything like that, like the supply chains and all of that, how that works. And I did learn about that. However, uh, something that I think, and it, it kind of applies to this book as well, but I feel like the people who would be the most impacted by a book like this, who the people who are really engaged in consuming fashion or fast fashion specifically and the ones that we kind of hope i say we collective we i don't know who i'm talking about that we hope would kind of question their choices and realize like the consequences of their actions of all oh, every action you take has a consequence right but the people that i think are not conscious of their actions in terms of like what is happening in the background well, whether that's like willful ignorance or just like they have not come across this information in the past, those are the people that would need to be reading a book like this the most. And I think those are the people that are the least likely to read a book like this. It's one of these books where once you know better, hopefully you do better, right? If you have the privilege to change and make the planet better for other people, including yourself as well, right? Then I believe we kind of should be doing that to the best of our ability. And I guess I kind of struggle with the impact that a book like this can have, because I think a lot of the people that would be picking up this book are people who are already interested in this topic, meaning that they have already curbed maybe their fast fashion addiction, or they've slowed down on how much clothing they are consuming and buying and donating and all these different things, right? And the people that this would have the biggest impact on, I think are the people that would not be picking up this book, unfortunately. Maybe that's not necessarily the point, Maybe it is just about, you know, teaching people how to have better conversations, how to take actions. There's actually in the back here, um, some really good like templates that you can send out to people in government and wherever that you live in like your local government and stuff like that. Write a letter, things that you can do on social media, how to sort of like spread this information because I think it's very information, very important information to be out there. That being said, this is a book that I would recommend to essentially everybody. This is information that people 
should know, <laughs> in my opinion. And hopefully by knowing this information, we can shift things a little bit, slowly but surely, and no call me surely. So anyways, this is one that I really recommend, like I said, to everybody. The next one, Rooted, How Regenerative Farming Can Change the World. This is also a book that I would love if more people would read because it talks a lot about our food choices. It, it, the way that this book is set up is kind of the author talking about what she is doing in her own life and as she is discovering the impacts that her choices, which like for example, for example, when she was living in the city, the impact that her choices that she made in the city, how that was impacting the farmers and sort of how they were choosing to farm when she's kind of like starting to make those connections but then also interviewing the actual farmers that are farming in different ways. These farmers come from very different backgrounds. They are farming in very different ways. They have different opinions and contradicting opinions on a lot of things, but it's fascinating to read their stories. But once again, just like this, this is a book that talks about the consequence of our actions. <laughs> and I don't know why it's like so hard for so many of us, including myself. I also turn a blind eye to th certain things, but like why it's so hard for us to accept and realize that our actions have consequences every single thing that you purchase right has a consequence on yourself on other people on the planet etc 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 and how do we just make better choices <laughs> once we're informed are we actually going to be making better choices i have no idea okay this is actually not a book that i would recommend to everyone this is a book i'd recommend to people who are interested in regenerative agriculture or farming in general or sort of how farming relates to sustainability and to the planet as like an ecosystem at large specifically because this this one I think is something that like everyone engages in in one way or another right we all wear clothes <laughs> we are all um we've all we've all consumed clothes right we've all somehow fed into the system whereas with this one even though it talks about you know the consequences of our food choices and how that impacts farmers and all of that it has such a emphasis on how farmers farm that I don't think this book would appeal to everybody. But the cover is gorgeous. No, I really, I just do love this cover. All right, that being said, a bit of existential crisis over the last couple of weeks, but I really enjoyed both of these books. I'm very happy that I read both of them. I personally really enjoyed both of them. Like I said, I don't think everyone would enjoy both of them and I don't think both of them are useful for necessarily everybody. But if you haven't picked up a book, for the climate on yet this is one that i would highly highly recommend <laughs>